Hey, what's up, guys? Surgeon Devil Wrestling Vlog. That's right, top five SummerSlam matches. Now, SummerSlam is the third oldest pay per view around. You know, WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, SummerSlam, then Survivor Series. That's the big four. Um, you know, I'd have to say, you know, there's been a lot of great WrestleMania, uh, sorry, a lot of great SummerSlam matches that have been out, um, you know. But especially back in the day when Hogan was just rocking this shit. But a lot of my favorite matches are recent matches. Well, Attitude Era recent. Not to say the first one was, uh, I would say SummerSlam 97. Taker versus Brett. Great match. Um, you know, sorry getting a text here. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of... Uh, Sorry guys, I'm getting a text message here. Right, sorry. <laughs> Looking back on SummerSlam '97, it was the pinnacle of Bret Hart being the asshole. Nobody liked it, and the Undertaker was the demonic type Undertaker starting to transition into the Ministry Taker. And this was also the time Shawn was, you know, feuding with Bret and. You know, he was made the special guest referee. The match was a great, great battle. I mean, the match was amazing through and through. And then it ended with Sean nailing The Undertaker and Bret Hart beating The Undertaker and taking the title to Canada and Canada like they were better than America. So that would have to be my number five. Uh, you know, it was a great match. I loved it. It was incredible. You really don't see the matches like that anymore. I'm looking at my text right now. Uh, but. And then you have 1990. 1998. Yeah, 98. Sorry. I'm, I'm kind of foggy right now worked until 11.05 last night, got home, stayed up to about 12.30, 1 o'clock, then woke up at like 6.30 this morning. Um, I'd have to say 98 was, was the main event. 98 was also incredible for the simple fact. It was one of the best feuds in history. Austin, Taker, you know, their feud always seemed to rekindle one way or another. And Stone Cold beat Taker, and everyone was like, what? And, you know, it was just, it was amazing. It was, you know, Austin retained his title, and, you know, Taker was hell-bent on beating Steve Austin, but, you know, it was one of the best feuds. It was one of the best build-up feuds, I'd have to say, in the history of SummerSlam, because it built up and built up and built up, and you just couldn't match, like, especially back, back in that day, you really couldn't match, you know, the way they built up stuff, and... It's just incredible. So that was my number four. Number three would have to be 99. The following year, Austin, Hunter, this is when China was still with them. And they had Jesse Ventura be the special guest referee. And it was a great match between two of the best wrestlers to me in history uh, with one of the best Gimmickle wrestlers, you know, Jesse the Body Ventura was amazing. Then he became the governor, and then, you know, all that. But it was a great match. Um, you know, it was, it's hard pressed to beat um, a lot of the older pay per views compared to today. But some of the talent today are really stepping up and showing their shit. They really are. I mean, you just you can't touch them. Uh, you know, with like Seth Rollins, I know a lot of people don't like Seth Rollins today, but gotta give the boy credit. He's been he's been kicking ass and taking names. Uh, granted, he might have had help, but he's still damn pretty damn good. Dean Ambrose, Bray Wyatt, so on and so forth. Um, so if I had to pick, that would be my number three. If I had to pick another one, it would have to be SummerSlam. I'd have to say 2000. Uh, it was a TLC match between ENC, the Hardys, 
and the Dudleys, I do believe. Yeah, Dudleys. Um, that match is revolutionary with tag teams, especially triple tag teams. You don't see that. Um, kind of like how they did the tag team uh, Lemonish Chamber, which I found kind of stupid because they had three members of the New Day in there. Then they had Torito with Los Matadores or whatever the fuck you want to call them. That was pretty fucking stupid if you ask me. But I would have to say, you know, that match really set the bar for tag teams back in the day. Back in the day, you couldn't touch tag team wrestling. Especially in the Attitude Era, come the fuck on. I mean, you have one of the best tag teams in history, the Dudleys. Then you had another great tag team in the Hardys, and you had an even, another great tag team in ENC. Edge and Christian, for those of you who don't know the nomenclature ENC. Uh, amazing match. Incredible, incredible match. And that, my friends, would have to be definitely my number two. My number one, wow, it's kind of hard to pick because there's so many good ones. Uh, looking at my text messages while I'm thinking. Um, let me see here. What would be my number one? Because there's so many, so many to choose from. I'd have to say my number one. It, it's a lot of people want Jesus as their number one, but I will. Um, we gotta put this phone down. So, okay, no more text for now. Um, I'd have to say my number one would be 1993. It was when Yokozuna was really coming into power in WWE, or back in the WWF. Um, and then Lex Luger went from the narcissist. To which basically Chris Masters ripped off and then Dave Otunga ripped off, which was really fucking stupid. But, you know, he came in as an American hero. Well, he this is his face turn, and then they had the Body Slam Challenge, like right before SummerSlam on USS Intrepid, I think it was. And all these, you know, bodybuilders and basketball players, football players, baseball players, fans try to body slam the 600 and like. 90 pound Yokozuna. No one could do it. I he was 690. He was like 560 or so. And here all of a sudden, here comes Lex Luger. He's built like a brick shit house. And Body Slam's a big motherfucker. And then they set up, you know, the main event Luger, Yokozuna. The match went forever. And Yoko really held his own. And how the match ended was kind of fucked up to me. Um. You know, it's for the championship. Luger never held the WWE championship, which I find kind of like a ripoff because he was such a great world champion, WCW and NWA. Um, you know, he had that, you know, the bionic forearm where he had that steel plate there. And all of a sudden, you know, it was kind of funny. And then match went on and on. Luger kept trying to get Yoko down, body slammed him, and all of a sudden he just fucking pow. And knocked Joker out of the ring. Referee counted to 10. Luger won the match, didn't win the belt. A lot of people didn't like that outcome. And But still, Yokozuna lost. And I think it was his first loss that he actually had in the ring in a match. So, you know, I mean, he went like a, he had a rocket up his big ass and he was going that year. And then gets a limp and then gets beaten by a count out. So he still lost, but it was a damn good match. So that's my top five favorite SummerSlam matches. Comment below what your guys' favorite SummerSlam match is and tell me why. So, you know, this is going to be one of the longest videos I make except for my music video I'm getting ready to make, which is my top five favorite metal songs, which I think I already did. No? Hell, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I'll go back and look at my videos. So for now, you know, this has been my top five favorite wrestling. Eh. So don't forget to like, subscribe, favorite, share the video. Don't forget to get everybody to subscribe. Love you guys. And as always, remember, wrestling might be predetermined, but if you call it fake, get your ass in the fucking ring and take a body slam. But for now, this is third gen. Rock on, guys.